Whose grave is this, sirrah? Mine, sirrah. Oh, I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in it. And thou lie out, aunt, yet it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, yet it is mine. Thou dost lie in it. To be in it and to say it is thine, tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore thou liest. Ah, but tis a quick lie. Tool the way again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? For no man. What woman, then? For none, neither. Well, who is to be buried in it? One that was a woman, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> How absolute the knave is. We must speak by the card, or equivocation will undo us. By the Lord, Horatio, this three years I have taken note of it. The age is grown so picked that the toe of the peasant grows so near the heel of the courtier, he galls his kibe. <clears throat> How long hast thou been a grave maker? Of all the days in the year. Uh, I came to it on that day our last King Amlet overcame Fortinbras. Oh, how long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. Uh, in the very day that our young King Amlet was born. He that is mad and sent to England? I marry. Why was he sent into England? Why? Because he's mad. And he shall recover of his wits there, and if he do not, is no great matter there. Why? Why? Because there, it will not be seen in him. There, the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? They they losing his wits. Upon what grounds? Why, here in Denmark, <laughs> I've been a sexton here, boy and man, thirty years. How long will a man lie in the earth ere he rot? Faith, if he may not be rotten before he dies, as we have many a pocky courses nowadays, uh, he'll last you some eight year or nine year. A tanner will last you nine year. Oh, why ye more than another? Why, his hide is so tanned by his trade that it will keep out the water a great while. And your water is a sore decayer of your son dead body. Uh, uh, here be a skull that hath lain you in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse on Mac Fellows, it was. Whose do you think it was? Nay, I know not. A pestilence on him for a mad rogue. A poured a flag in a rinish on my head once. <laughs> this skull, sir, was. Sir, Yorick Skull, the king's jester. This. In that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. He was a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. Why, why, he hath borne me on his back a thousand times. And now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles? Your songs, your, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chapfallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked oh, this fashion in the earth? Been so. And smelt so. <laughs> in so, my lord. Well, to what base uses we may return, Horatio? Why may not imagination trace 
the noble dust of Alexander. Will I find it stopping a bungle? Twere to consider too curiously to consider so. No faith, not a jot, but to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it as thus. Alexander died. Alexander was buried. Alexander returneth to dust. The dust is earth. And of earth we make loam. And why of that loam whereto he was converted, might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that, that earth which kept the world in awe might patch a wall to expel the winter's flaw. But soft, but soft, here comes the king. The queen, courtiers, who is this they follow in such maimed rites? This doth betoken the course they follow did with desperate hand fordo its own life. Cause of some estate. Couch we a while and mark. What ceremony else? That is laity is a very noble youth, Mark. What ceremony else? Her obsequies have been as far enlarged as we have warranty. Her death was doubtful, and but that great command or sways the order. She should in ground unsanctified have lodged to the last trumpet. Her charitable prayers, shards, flints, and pebbles should be thrown upon her. Yet here she is allowed her virgin crants, her maiden strumments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must there no more be done? No more be done. We should profane to the service of the dead, to sing requiem and such rest to her as to peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be, while thou liest howling. What, a ferrophilia? Beneath to the sweet. Farewell. I hope thou shouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to expect to be made, and not have strewn thy grave. Oh, trouble, woe! Fall ten times trouble on that cursed head whose wicked deed thy ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while till I've caught her once more in mine arms. Now pile your dust on the quick and dead till of this flat a mountain you've made to o'ertop old Pelion, or the sky's head of blue Olympus. What is he? Whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded hearers. This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thy soul. I pray it's not well. I pretty take thy fingers Don't from my soul. Thunder. Though I am not splendid him and rash, yet have I in me something <laughs> dangerous. Good, my lord, be quiet. Uh, hold off thy hand, while I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelid will no longer wag. I love Ophelia! Forty thousand brothers could not, with all their quantities of love, make up my son. What wilt thou do for her? Swoon, show me what thou do! Oh, he is I mad, Laertes. Staff would tear thyself, drink up Aesil, eat a crocodile, I'll do it. For the love of God, forever him. Wine, to outface me with leaping in her grave, to be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us till our ground, singeing his pate against the burning zone, make Arsa like a wart. Nay, in that mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. This is mere madness, and thus a while the fit will work on him, anon as patient as a female dove, that when her golden couplets are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Hear you, sir. What is the reason use me thus? I loved you ever but it is no matter. Let Hercules do what he may. 
The cat will mew. And dog will have his day. I pray thee, good Horatio, wait on him. <laughs> <laughs>